If you want to get into candle making or you're new to candle making and you're struggling, this is going to be the video for you. I'm going to break down the costs. I'm going to break down exactly what you use and I'm going to break down how to use it. So join me. Not entirely sure why I tried to fist bump the camera, but here you go, virtual fist bump. Anyway, let's get into the video. These are the types of candles I make. So they're container candles. They're called that because they're in the container, they're in this jar. And for container candles, you need a specific type of wax. You need container wax. And you want to make sure you get specific wax for container candles because it works differently. Pillar wax and container candle wax work in two different ways. Pillar wax sets very, very hard, so you get nice freestanding candles. And container wax is a little bit softer, so it adheres to the glass. So if you're buying candle wax, make sure you get the right one. And this is my basic setup. Always in a slight flux of chaos. So before we get started with candle making, we're going to need some equipment. So let's go over what we need. The first thing we're going to need is something to melt wax. So I recommend getting one of these. It's 75 pounds on Amazon and it's absolutely worth its weight in gold. It's so quick at heating up candles. You can do little and often. You can do a couple after work, a few before work. It is simply brilliant. You can melt four liters of wax in one go and that makes me 16 candles. I wouldn't bother with double boilers or anything like that. Just crack on and get something useful. Next we're going to need something to pour the wax into when we have heated our candle wax. So I'll just get some jugs like these. These are £1.50, £2 from B&M or like the range. You can probably find them on Amazon pretty cheap. You can get nice metal ones if you want to sort of melt them and clean them. But I just buy these and get rid of them every few months. It's just easier for me. I know it's a bit wasteful. We're also going to need a probe. Candle making is quite an accurate science, so you're going to need to make sure your temperatures are right. This is literally £5 on Amazon. I'd also get a little whisk for mixing your fragrance oils in. It just helps bind it better. And if you want to spend a bit of money just getting a setup, that table was £35 on Amazon. This is from Ikea. I think it's about £100, as was that, about £75. So the whole setup for everything just being vaguely similar in sort of aesthetics was about 300 pounds. But that also includes this chest of drawers and that little document holder. The chest of drawers is a bit rubbish. It is falling apart, so don't get one of those. And you're also going to need scales to weigh everything. Everything in candle making is weighed. Do not use volume and try and measure in a jug because it simply won't work. Now for the exciting stuff, the candle making. You're going to need some wax. I recommend getting container wax if you want to make container candles. I use SCX wax from Candle Shack. I'm also experimenting with C6, which is another soy coconut wax. And I'll be playing around with S41, which is a, another soy container wax from Candle Shack. And it is specifically designed for its scent throw. So at the moment, I'm sort of combining all of those together and just seeing how it works out. I'm trying to get the best of every aspect of wax. I want really good scent throw. I want aesthetically pleasing good glass adhesion. Wow, that's a mouthful. And I want candles with a nice reset. I want nice flat tops. I don't want any of those little cauliflowers. Sometimes you get those with different types of natural waxes. It's just normal. It's just how they set. You can explain that to people, but well, whether people care or not, I don't know. Anyway, that is what I'm using. When you buy the wax in bulk, they come in big slabs. So you're going to need a knife to cut up the wax. And the other thing we're going to need is wicks. Lots of wicks. And even more wicks. It's important to have lots of different wicks around. I recommend just investing a bit of money and getting a various range. Most of my wicks are CL wicks. I have CL wicks from 12 up to 17, just because different oils and different waxes perform differently. So you need different wicks to see how they work. In the beginning, I thought one wick would do everything. So if I get a CL14 wick and it works perfectly with one fragrance oil, the knowledge in my head thinks it would work with every fragrance oil, but different fragrance oils work differently with different waxes and different wicks. I've got one fragrance oil, which burns terribly on a CL14 wick. I need to use like a CL17 and above just to get a good milk ball so it works properly. So get a decent amount of wicks. I'd get some TCR ones. I'd get some Stabilo ones. I'd get some CL wicks. You don't have to spend loads. Just get a few different ones so you can play around with it. But for the purpose of this video, I'll show exactly what I'm doing because I'll just make it completely simple and imbecile proof. And I'm an imbecile, so let's get on with it. Now we've touched on wicks. What I use to stick down the wicks is gasket silicon. Now it might sound a bit weird, but it's something I stole from Stanley Handcrafting and it works amazingly. You just dab a little bit on the end of your wick and then pop it down. You can use those wick stickums, you can use a glue gun, but for me, this just works super simple and it's like heat resistant. Sometimes with the wickums, when the candle gets too hot down the bottom of the jar, the wicks can come off and move around, which can cause a bit of a fire hazard. With this, it stays down there forever because this is designed for cars which run at super high temperatures the engines get mad hot obviously and yeah great i'll show you how i use it in a minute super simple and with the wicks you're going to need a wick master 3000 
You may have seen that in one of my previous videos, but it's basically just hollowed out biro pen. And by hollowed out, I mean, you just get rid of the ink and then you put your wick in and you stick it down. And the jars I use for pretty much 90% of my candle making are these ones. They are one LB, one pound honey jars. They hold 450 mils of liquid. And for me, in candle wax terms, because candle wax is, it doesn't weigh the same as water, I get 280 grams of wax in it, which makes a candle which lasts for about 50 to 60 hours, give or take. The jars come in boxes of 72. Each jar costs roughly between 60 and 70p, depending on where I buy them from. There's lots of websites where you can buy them, and I will list some of those down below in the little chat box below the video. So you can buy everything I use. Fragrance oils. Behind me, I've got quite a few there. I tend to buy them in one litre bottles. That is probably the cheapest, most cost of... Yeah. And the other thing we're going to need is fragrance. We want good candles that smell beautiful. And behind me, I've got a few there from various different websites. I tend to buy them in one litre bottles. That is the most cost-effective way I can do it without absolutely breaking the bank. You can buy them in five litre bottles, which does save you a lot of money because it brings the cost of everything down. But that's going to cost you it's going to start about £300 for five litres, so it's quite expensive. It is worth it if you can afford to buy things in a bigger bulk. So if you can buy wax in bigger bulk, if you can buy jars in bigger bulk, if you can buy fragrance oils in bigger bulks and wicks, it will just drive the cost of each product down, which ultimately makes you more profitable. However, the outlay is tremendous, I guess. It is quite big in the beginning. So I think as candle makers, cash flow can be an issue. So I try to buy as much as you can in a bulk that is affordable for you. If you're starting out like I did, I would just buy the litre bottles and I'd buy just a box here and there, a box of wax, and it becomes easier the more you sell because cash flow becomes better. So there's websites where I buy fragrance oils from. There's Mystic Moments, which is quite good, quite cheap. A lot of them are really nice. You just have to be careful. Some of them don't work in soil wax. You won't get a scent throw. And you just need to test it with everything else. Fresh Skin, I buy quite a few from Fresh Skin as well. Similar to Mystical Moments, they don't all work in each wax, so you need to test them. Some are better than others, but both of these websites are dirt cheap. You can buy a litre of fragrance oil for about £30, which is mad cheap. And I think a lot of them have free delivery, so that is super. So if you want to get the cost of goods down with your candles and make good smelling candles, I'd try those websites first. It's what I wanted to do. As a chef, when I make a dish, I need to cost it to make sure it's profitable on the menu. So for instance, if I buy some cod, some new potatoes, some samphire, and make a little butter sauce, I cost it out, say for instance, that costs five pounds, I need to sell it for roughly four times that much to make sure it is profitable for the restaurant, because we still need to pay for staff, bills, heating, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we need to do with candle making. So we want to work out the cost of everything. I'll break it all down in a minute so you can see where we are. So that's why it's important to get your costings right in the first place, which is part of why this video, I think, will be useful for a lot of you. I see a lot of these comments on Facebook where they're like, it's cost me £12 to make my candle, I need to times it by four to sell it, and it's going to be like £48, but that is ludicrous. No one's going to buy a candle for £48, no matter how good it is. Apologies, I went off on a bit of a tangent talking about costings, which was going to be a later part of the video. Anyway, let's go back to fragrance oils, what I was talking about. There's a few other websites where I get them from. There's Fragrance Oils Direct, which do weird and quirky ones. There's also Pure Scented, where I buy a few from. They're really good. And Nikura Oils. So those three probably the bulk of it. So it's five in total, I think. Five websites where I buy all my fragrance oils from. Like I said, there's varying in potency and design. I'd say Nukira Oils, Pure Scented, and Fragrance Oils Direct are probably on the more potent end. They do cost a bit more. I think they're more specifically designed for candle makers. As with everything, you need to test it. But I think sometimes you buy cheap and cheerful, it's not going to be as good as the more expensive ones, but it doesn't always work like that. It's just worth testing. Shortly, we're going to get into the candle making and I'll show you exactly what I do temperature wise and how I make my candles. But let's just go over the costings just to make sure we're profitable before we start. There's no point really starting a business or any kind of entrepreneurial activity if it's not going to make any money. It's just going to be a waste of your time, resources, and it's going to be a headache. So let's just break it down. The candle jar is 60p. The wax I put in it costs £1.50. The fragrance oil costs between 90p and £1.50, depending on the oil. The wick is 15p. I reckon the sort of amount of gasket silicon I use is about 5p. The CLP label that goes on the bottom is 2p. The label that goes on the front is 15p. And that doesn't include ink, but I'll add that up at some point as sort of a cost. The 
twine that goes around the outside is 24p. So that brings us to about sort of four pounds for each candle before we've even put it in a box. And then the boxes I used are little mug smash boxes. I think I've got one over here. They look like that, pretty cool. They cost 40p. I put them in a little Hessian sack. That costs another 37p. And then I've got little box stickers. I've got candle care cards. So adding everything up, each candle costs me between sort of £4.50 and £6, depending on the fragrance oil and what I've put in it. So generally speaking, most people times that by four to make a decent profit. And if we're going to sell it wholesale, we times it by two, if you want to include the boxes. But for wholesale, I just sell the candles in the jars. So yeah, I sell my candles for about £18.50 at the moment, which is probably on the cheaper end, but I'm still building up a loyal customer base. And I want to provide just the best candle I can at the lowest price I can, because I don't want to mug people off. So that's where we are. Let's get into the candle making. The first thing we need to do is just heat up our wax melter. Fill it with wax, melt that, get it to 75 degrees, and then whilst that's melting, we're gonna wick our jars. So what we need to do is get the Wickmaster 3000, <laughs> our little pyro, put your wick in it, get the gasket silicon, you just need a little dab of that on the top. That's all you need. And then stick it down in the jar, like so. Aim for the middle, and you're good to go. You just need to do the rest of them. For me, for me, this is the quickest way to do it. You just dab it on and go and go, go. I can't think of a quicker way to do it unless you pay some people to do it for you. Anyway, let's whip the jars. The gasket silicon costs about five pounds for a little tube and you honestly get hundreds and hundreds of candles out of it. And what I'm gonna be using today is citronella oil. This is from Fresh Skin. I think it's about 35 pounds for one liter of essential oil, which is well cheap. What we wanna do first is pour the wax, then we're gonna measure it and weigh it out so we know we've got the right wax. And then we're gonna add the essential oil once the wax is down to the right temperature. Right, we've got everything poured, and now we need to weigh it. I'm gonna aim for 1,050 grams, and that is gonna be the perfect amount to make four candles that are gonna go in those jars over there. So get an empty jug, turn the scales on, make sure it's tarred, pour your wax in, and we're gonna aim for, like I said, 1,050 grams, and that's gonna be the perfect amount to make four candles. Once everything's weighed out, we're gonna let that cool down to 65 degrees. This is quite important. This is what I've worked out, works perfectly for my candles. A lot of people tell you to add the oils at 85 degrees and things like that, but for a lot of soy waxes, they've got different temperatures, they work differently. So what I've established from this and looking at a lot of guidance from Candle Shack, 65 degrees for the candle wax I'm using is what I do and it works, works for me. It's worth testing it and just making sure you're happy with what you're doing, but this works for me. Once you're down to temperature, back onto the scales and then weigh out your fragrance oil. So for me, all of my candles are 10%. So I just add in 100 grams of essential oil and that is gonna be 10%. And then I give that a really good whisk and I whisk for a good two minutes. And then every couple of minutes, as it's cooling, I come back and periodically whisk it. Whether or not this makes a difference, I don't know. But in my head, I feel like it does. Now, there's probably more efficient ways of doing this. I've seen people weigh out their fragrance oil, and then they just chuck it in one by one, and that'll probably save you a lot of time. I can't be bothered to weigh it all out and have loads of containers with fragrance oil sitting around, so I just do it like that. I just do it one by one. It's what I've been doing. It works for me, so... Now this is the fun game of whisking until it cools. Like I said, in my head, it feels like it makes a difference, but whether or not it does, I don't know. Now I'll let those suckers behind me cool down to between 45 and 50 degrees, and that's where I pour it. What we want to do is let it get cooled down as much as possible, so it is almost sort of at room temperature before it sets. We want the wax to cool down slowly and gently. If it cools down too quickly or we pour it too hot, we're gonna get sinkholes, we're gonna get uneven tops, we're gonna get blad, glass adhesion. So we want it to be closest to room temperature before it sets. So the recommended 
sort of temperature for this is it varies a lot. So the S41, they want you to get it down to 30, 35 degrees, but I find it gets too opaque, it's too hard to pour, it's a bit too like gunky because it's setting too much. I think the SEX wax, I can't remember if there's a recommendation, but it's about 50 degrees. Things like parasoy, paraffin waxes, you pour those a lot higher, they're 60, 65 degrees. Soy wax you want to pour a lot lower to make sure you get a good glass adhesion, you get no sinkholes, you get no issues. So we go low, and we go slow, so 45 to 50 degrees I found is the optimal amount for me. And I just pour it nice and slowly. We don't want to get too many bubbles. We just want to do it gently and nicely. Now to a lot of you, this might look like chaos. There are probably more efficient ways of doing it and better ways, but for me, this works and it's what I've been doing. I'm just a small little business and as things go, I will scale up and I'll get bigger melting pots, I'll get bigger jugs, and I'll just make it a more efficient operation. But at the moment, this is what I've got, and this is what I'm doing. I find as well, having it in lots of little jugs, it cools down quicker. For me, a lot of the time, time is of the essence. I'm doing this before work, I'm doing it after work, I'm doing all my days off, I'm cramming in as much as possible to make this side hustle a legitimate business. So they cool down pretty quick individually like that. If you had a big vat of wax, it's gonna cool down at a different temperature, and it's gonna take a lot longer. So little individual ones like that might take half an hour, they might take an hour, as soon as you've added the fridge, fragrance oil, they're going to cool down a lot more quickly. So you just need to keep an eye on it. So I just go in the next door, which is where my little office is. I'll do a few articles. I'll do something productive. And I'll just come back and I'll keep stirring periodically until I get down to between 45, 50 degrees. And that's why I pour it. Right. It's been about half an hour. So let's double check, see what temperature we're at. As with everything kind of related, it's important to be accurate. So we need to probe it. Yeah, so that one in the corner, heading down to 45 degrees. So we're going to start pouring that. A few of them are a little hotter. A few of them are sort of 47, 48, which is it's, it's in the right range. So let's get pouring. Right, because I've measured everything, I know each jug, I've got four candles in it. So I'm going to pour it until I get to roughly about the top of the line, and then I'll go back and fill them up a little bit. So I'm going to get four candles out of each jug, and I'm just going to pour very slowly. Right, that is everything poured. You can see some of them are starting to set already because it is already down at that temperature. So the next thing we need to do is just get the wick holders and to secure the wick so we get a nice central wick. Right, that is candles made, melted, poured, wicked, and secured. So the whole process has probably taken me half an hour start to finish, give or take, to make 32 candles, which I don't think is too bad. Now, oh, if you've done everything properly, you should get a candle like this, which has got beautiful glass adhesion and a nice smooth top. However, sometimes we can get some issues. We can get bumpy tops like the top of that, whether you can see or not, if it's gonna focus. We'll come back to that. You can get bumpy tops, or you can get sinkholes, which may look like this. So you might get a few little bumps like that. And they're quite easy to fix. You don't really need to worry about it. We might get bumps like that, which we can feel. All we need is a heat gun, one of these little fellas. And what you do is basically like an overpowered <laughs> bloody hairdryer. You just plug it in and slowly melt the tops and then you can get a nice even candle top. So if you have any imperfections, this will fix it. So I'd get a heat gun. This costs about 20 pounds from Amazon. You might be wondering why I'm sharing everything I'm doing, why I've gone into detail of costing and where I buy it all from, because I'm not really worried about people copying and stealing my ideas. A lot of people will watch this and think about doing it. They just simply won't do the work, or put the effort in. For me, this is three years to get to this point. It's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of testing, watching people's videos, reading like, the descriptions, the wax specifications, it's taken a lot of time and effort. Even if I give you all of the tools and all of the tips, you might not be able to make a candle the same way I do. There's so many things that can affect it, like where you live, just the temperature, just all those little things will have an impact on your candle because they're natural products and it's just never gonna be exactly the same each time. So I'm not really worried about people stealing my ideas. By all means, I'm here to help people and I wanna sort of open the lid on candle making. It was a bit mysterious. It felt a bit gatekeeper-y, like people were hiding a lot of things in the beginning because they didn't want you to steal their ideas or things, which is fine. Like, I get that. But 
I don't know. <laughs> we're all here to learn and we're all here to sort of get on with stuff. So that's why I'm doing it. Like I said, most people won't even bother doing this. I'll look at it and they'll go, yeah, I'll give it a go. But they just simply won't put in the work or buy the stuff to do it. So yeah, I've broken it down, made it easy. Give it a go, make some candles, make some money, do something nice. And that's pretty much it. That's how I met my candles, start to finish. That's the cost of everything. And that's more or less my process. That's what I've been doing. That's exactly what I did in December to make almost 10,000 pounds revenue. I think I made eight and a half thousand pounds in total, which is mad considering it's just me in my spare room making candles, melting wax, sticking in jars. Granted, I think what I'm making is pretty good and it stands out and I'm sort of enjoying the process. So I'm pretty proud of that. So yeah, that's exactly what I did to make some of that cash money. And it's exactly what I'm going to keep doing to hopefully break free from my job and become sort of financially secure with my own freedom. What I do, what the efforts I put in and the time I put into it is for me and what I'm going to get out of it. I've got a lot of creativity and a lot of things I want to do and I want to be able to make that into a career. It's just inevitable. It will just take a certain amount of time. At the moment, I may be here, but I want to be over here. All that's between that is time. Anyway, once again, I'm off on a tangent. So yeah, if you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're into candle making and you want to see how I progress my little journey. Because in a year or two, this will be flying. This will be somewhere else and I will be, yeah, doing my thing. I've also got another video on candle labels. So if you want to complete it, there'll be a link down there or a link up there on my little candle label making video. I'll just use Canva and I print them off at home. Getting a printer recently has been a revelation. It's really given me the freedom and the opportunity just to create weird and wonderful candles and not have to wait for labels to be delivered. I can edit them, I can print them and I can do it in real time. So that's been wicked. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>